Drawing pixel art can be difficult, tedious, and animating it can be a whole mess. So let's cheat it using Blender's compositor and a couple other handy tricks. First, some setup. In the Render Properties tab, make sure we're using Eevee, and in the sampling, turn down your render and viewport samples to 1. Scroll all the way down to Film, make it transparent, and then crank that filter size down to 0. Lastly, in Color Management, change the View Transform to Standard. Go to your Output Properties and make your resolution 10 times how many pixels you want your image to be. I want my image to be 64 pixels tall by 64 pixels wide, so I'm making my resolution 640 by 640. If you want to tweak it later, you can change the resolution by multiples of 10. Alright, now let's set up our scene. Pixel art looks best when the object you are rendering has a clear silhouette and bold colors. The less pixels you want to use, the more clear and readable you want your details. For reference, here's the final product for my game's character, and here's the original render. Keep that in mind when you're modeling and texturing. So here, I'm setting up a quick tune shader. If you want more details on that, check out the first part of my last video. Also, here's a quick tip. Make all the lights lighting your object as small as possible so we don't get contact shadows messing with our colors later. Next, let's set up our camera. Many games like Stardew Valley and Into the Breach are shown from an orthographic perspective. So if you're going for that look, select your camera, go into its object properties, and change the type from perspective to orthographic. A very common orthographic rotation in games is 65 on the X and 45 on the Z. So that's what I'm using here. And we can tweak the zoom with our orthographic scale. An easy way to set up your camera to orbit around your object is to add an empty to the center of our object, scale it up so we can see it, and then parenting our camera to it. To get all angles of our object, all we have to do is animate the empty's rotation around the z-axis, and there we go. Now that our scene is set up and ready, let's render it out. Okay, now we have our render. This is when the magic happens. Open the compositing workspace and check Use Nodes. Then drag out a new window and make it an image editor environment. Click the linked image dropdown, then select our render result. Now that we can see what we're working with, back in the compositor, add two scale nodes and a pixelate node in between them. Set the first node to 0.1 on the X and Y and the second one to 10. So here's the most basic version of making pixel art in Blender. If there are too many or not enough pixels, again, you can change the render resolution bigger or smaller by increments of 10. If this is what you're looking for, we can stop right here. But let's be honest, we can make it so much better. First, if you want a more retro feel to your render, add a posterize node and tweak it to your liking. Next, let's add a border to our object. Back in render properties, let's check freestyle. Here we can change the thickness of our border. One benefit of freestyle is that it is pixel perfect. So when changing your thickness, keep it a whole number. Four worked for me. Freestyle isn't a real-time effect, so render that out, and there we have a border. Let's tweak it from here. To change its settings, go to the View Layer Properties and scroll down to Freestyle. Here we can experiment with all the edge types, and down in Freestyle Color, we can change the color of all freestyle lines. But, if you want your objects or materials to have different line colors, add a modifier to your freestyle color and select Material. From here, we can go to our Objects Materials, scroll down, and change the line colors there. If the flat color and harsh border look is too intense, for you. You can always go into the compositor and throw in a blur node, with a subtle number like 3 or 5 in there to soften those lines. Woo, nice. What's great about this effect is now that we got the look we're looking for, we're done. We can animate our camera, objects, or even add more objects, and when we render it out it's the exact result we're looking for. And if not, we can very quickly and easily go back and change it in the compositor. And this effect isn't limited to just 3D objects. If you already have something rendered out or you have an image or video you would like to make pixelated, you can set it as a plane in your scene with the images as planes add-on, and then use the same trick to make a quick pixelization effect as well. Super flexible and forgiving. Well, time to get out there and make some retro pixelated renders. If you make something cool with this, tag me. Have fun.